Hey girls, I am so happy that you have decided to continue studying through the scriptures with us. Even though we ended our Water Fire Stone series, we are now in the book of Philippians. And I cannot tell you how relevant, once again, God's word is. It has come alive to me as I've been studying this first chapter. But before we begin with the first chapter, I just wanted to do a quick flyover backdrop to the book of Philippians because I find it to be so fascinating. And you can find some of this backstory in Acts chapter 15 and 16. What we see in Acts chapter 15 is the beginning of the second missionary journey that Paul was to, was to go on. And um, originally his plan was to take his friend and partner in the gospel, Barnabas, with him. But unfortunately, Barnabas wanted to take somebody along that Paul did not feel was qualified to make the trip with them. It was his nephew, John Mark. And so because this little disagreement happened, it erupted actually into a sharp disagreement. The New Testament uses those very words. Can you imagine these two godly men, Barnabas, who is called the son of consolation, and the great apostle Paul, two partners in ministry, actually broke apart over a disagreement. And so Paul took Silas and went one direction. Barnabas took John Mark and went another direction. How fascinating to know that as we read through, especially the first few chapter, the first chapter of the book of Philippians, and then land in the last chapter of the book of Philippians, Paul is insisting that we be of one mind and one heart. And I think he must have had some of that sort of in his thoughts as he was writing this. So we read that they had this sharp disagreement. And this missionary journey began differently than the first. Um, it almost seemed as though this missionary journey was fraught with more challenges than they had ever experienced. It says that they wanted to go to a certain direction, but the Spirit of the Lord forbade them from going. How interesting is that? And so they went another direction. And finally, Paul had a vision of a man, a Macedonian man, saying to Paul in this vision, come and help us. And so what we read is that Paul and Silas decided to make the ship, the journey over to the area of Macedonia. And there in Macedonia, they came to the city of Philippi. Philippi was an interesting place. It was um, sort of where east meets west. It was, a, it was a, a crossroads. It was a not a huge city, but it was a significant city. And it was a city that was comprised of many different types of people. And we read that in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, that the first thing Paul and Silas decide to do is to look for other believers. And so they go down to this place, what they call the riverside, and there they meet a group of women praying. Now, these would have been godly women, they would have been Jewish women, but because there hadn't been a significant number of men in the population, Jewish men, they couldn't form the, I don't know, you might call it the quorum or the, the legal um, Jewish right, uh, laws of allowing them to meet as a official congregation. So these women are meeting down by the riverside and they're praying. And when Paul preaches the gospel to them, that their Messiah had come and that he had, that he had redeemed the world by his blood on the cross, that Lydia's heart was opened. And it is so wonderful to think, isn't it amazing? We started the book of uh, the life of Moses looking at the women that were significant in his life. And here again, we find in the beginning of the church here at Philippi, that we have a woman opening her home. Yes, there was church in the home long before we had quarantine. And we have this amazing woman, Lydia, who was called a seller of purple. And what we know by that um, description is that Lydia was an affluent, if you wanted to make a comparison in the 21st century, she would have been like a shop owner on Rodeo Drive. She was a seller of purple, which was the finest dyes that could be um, found and the clothing that would be worn by the very, very affluent and the royal. Um, purple dye was hard to come by. So here is this affluent woman whose heart has been open to the gospel, who opens her home to the great Apostle Paul. And they begin the church there at Philippi in her home. The very next thing that happens is as they're 
going about the city preaching, they are plagued by a slave girl. And the slave girl keeps proclaiming, these men are from God, listen to them. And Paul, it says, becomes greatly annoyed with her. This slave girl was possessed by a demonic spirit. And when he turned to her, he cast out this demonic spirit to the great chagrin of her slave owners. So the second convert there in Philippi is a slave girl. Can you believe that? That they're these two women, complete opposite ends of the social spectrum. A slave girl could have been compared to perhaps a prostitute that someone is pimping out. She wasn't free, she was enslaved. And because she had this unusual, um, what they would call gift, because she was possessed by the, by the devil, these men were profiting off of her. But Paul delivers her and sets her free. And because that happens, these men who were her slave owners are so angry with the apostle Paul and Silas that they drag them before the magistrates. And before, a before they're given a trial, before the hearing is even heard, they are taken and they are beaten with, rods and they are put into prison. And there we meet the third significant convert. This convert is the Philippian jailer. And there while they are in this confined and very uncomfortable position with their feet in stocks and their backs ripped open, they rejoice. They sing songs at midnight and it says that the prisoners were listening or hearing them. And if you look at the word um, in the original language, it can imply that they were listening with delight. And then an earthquake came and all of their shackles fell off and the jailer, because he would have been held responsible for any escaped prisoners, he would have had to have paid with his life. He is about to, to he draws his sword and he's about to commit suicide. And Paul says, do yourself no harm, we're all here. And Paul and Silas, through that unusual set of circumstances, lead this man and his entire household to Christ. So I want you to think about this as a backdrop to, to the book of Philippians. Imagine an upper class affluent woman, like, you know, a woman on Rodeo Drive, a slave girl, like a girl in the inner city who's being pimped out for money. And now you have a blue collar guy, a cop, so to speak, who is just doing his duty and doing his job and all three of them become the first converts as we read that in the book of Acts. How interesting is that? But as we begin to study, you're going to realize that there are certain themes that are hit on. I think it's going to be fairly clear to you that the theme of joy is very important here. And, in, and Paul, much time later after having started the book of, uh, started the Church of Philippians, he ends up in prison. We don't know exactly what prison he was writing from, but we do know that he was in prison and he was chained to a Roman guard and that the gospel was being preached there in, in the entire Roman um, cohort had heard the gospel because of this. And we know that Paul recognized that he was where he was because God had placed him there. And how interesting to think that this letter of Philippians that we are reading today wouldn't be in our hands had not Paul been confined in prison. But one of the main themes that we see, and I, I mentioned this a moment ago in the conflict between Paul and Barnabas, is the theme of unity. We see that very clearly in chapter two, verse two, Paul is saying, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord with one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Another portion of scripture that we're going to get to in chapter four in the book of Philippians. And, and this is very interesting to me as well, simply because of the fact that the only three Philippians that are mentioned in this letter is, Yo is uh, Yodia and Sint Sintiki, I think is how you pronounce her name, and Epaphroditus. Epaphroditus was the person who was carrying this letter back to Philippi. The only other two people mentioned in the church in Philippi that Paul addresses by name are these two women. And what it says in chapter four, very interestingly enough, 
verse 2, he says, I entreat Yodia and Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers. What is happening that Paul would stop in the middle of this important apostolic letter to stop and address two women in this church that are quarreling with one another. They were once working side by side with each other, but now there is this sharp division. This theme of unity has been so beautifully laid out for us in the, in the book of Philippians. And I hope that wherever you are today, whatever situation you might be facing today, that you would consider how important it is that we be of one mind and one heart and loving each other, not dividing over insignificant things, but uniting for the gospel's sake, standing firm in order that the gospel might not be hindered. Paul knew that this could be a true danger for the church at Philippi, that there would arise these divisions and disagreements to such a degree that the gospel wouldn't go forth. Isn't it interesting to know that at the same time as Paul is um, emboldened and, the, and people are preaching the gospel, we're going to read that in chapter 1, the gospel is being spread and people are, are, are being motivated by what has happened to Paul, some for better and some for wor worse reasons. But in any way, Paul says, I rejoice the gospel is going out. At the same time that that is happening, a division is arising between these two women, and that could hinder and even derail the work. Same thing happened in the book of Acts. When the number of disciples began to multiply, there arose a division. Ladies, I want you to think about perhaps the sharp disagreements that might be happening in your home, in your life, between your friends, perhaps even between churches that would seek to undermine and derail what it is that God is doing in our lives. Don't let that steal your joy. Let us endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. And let's dive in deep in this book of Philippians. It's so rich with so much. So many times we're going to read Paul referring to the day of the Lord, the coming of the Lord, that he who began a good work in us will complete it unto the day of Jesus Christ. With the end in view, let's have a better perspective on how to live in the present. So I hope that this introduction helps you um, dive deep. Go back to Acts chapter 15 and 16, study those verses, and do a little investigating about Yodia and Syntyche. See what uh, maybe the Lord might speak to you through their um, correction by Paul. So I love you, and we will be seeing you on Zoom in your small groups. Stay connected.